Good night, uh, Burbis, and uh, welcome to another issue of um, this show that you all like and you all uh, stay up for every Saturday night. Uh, my name is Salim, and I'm sitting in for Dr. Veer Sami Ramaya, who is busy right now with a whole lot of people at his home at an at a AFC fundraiser. We just came from it, and uh, it, it was a tremendous amount of uh, uh, spirit and energy that, that we are seeing at Dr. Ramaya's place. Um, tonight um, is a special show, uh, not because I'm here, but because I've got other people here that will make it special. Uh, and we're discussing um, Our Future uh, Act Now. Uh, that's a special project that's um, uh, being managed by the Alliance for Change over the next few days. Uh, it uh, starts tonight on this television program. Uh, it goes to Carriverton tomorrow afternoon at five o'clock so those of you who are listening um there's a there's a fantastic event in Carriverton at the afc office we invite you and your family and your neighbors and everyone else to come on down um not only are you going to hear some fantastic things about changes that burbies are looking for uh but we've got some fantastic uh, gifts and giveaways uh for all the young people who are going to be there uh, and then we uh, the, the, um, the the project ends in, in Georgetown on Tuesday. Um, with me tonight, um, that's what makes it special tonight. Are three wonderful, um, beautiful um, 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 agents of change. Uh, that's what we, that's what we call um, ourselves these days, agents of change. And I have Nadia to my immediate right, and to her right is uh, Anita, and to her right is. Uh, wonderful Alicia from New Amsterdam. Um, I've said quite a lot in, in this intro and I would like to ask uh, each one of these girls to introduce themselves and talk a bit about, um, you know, um, what can we expect over with from you guys over the next few days? Okay, well, <laughs> my name is Nadia Sobin. I'm from New York, the Bronx. Um, me and my here, here, Anita came to help with the AFC campaigning and to encourage youths in Guyana to make a to make a change and uh, vote for the AFC. Thank you, Salim. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anita Jaigran, and I'm an American by birth. But being that my parents are Guyanese, we re-migrated here uh, when I was just a baby. So I spent most of my childhood here. We moved back to the U.S. about 10 years ago mainly for better opportunities, specifically in education for myself. Currently, I'm in the process of attaining my Bachelor of Science in Business Management as well as Psychology. And Alicia, what can we hear you about with you tonight? Hi, good night. Just my name, Alicia <laughs> Ernestine. I think everybody in Burbies knows that by now. I'm urging you so there. These two young women, they're not from here. They're foreign American. So if they are here to say that we need to change their living, where everything happens, where everything is possible, where youths live their dreams. So they are a perfect example to tell us tonight that we need to change. I'm urging you vote. Come out on election day and vote because if you don't vote, don't complain. Before we get to the vote though, I mean you guys, are, um, your parents are from Burbies. Yes. Um, what have you, I mean you, you, grew up, you grew up in the United States um, with your extended family, you might, your uncles and aunts, mm -hmm. and I've seen your family, they're like tremendously huge, <laughs> you know, like 47 size families, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, tell me, um, what have you heard about Burbies growing up with your family and your grandparents and stuff? Well, growing up I heard things were a lot different than they are now. I heard. Um, education was different, life was different mm -hmm. than it is now. It was happier times according to them compared to life as it is now. Okay. And what are you hearing about now? I mean, I know it was happier, but what is it? Now, How yeah. do you describe it as now? Now they say no one's really there anymore, everyone's left. Um, mm -hmm. There's not much businesses, not much going on. It's not really a place you'd want to be, not really a place you'd want to live. And what have you been hearing about? Right. All I hear about now is crime, uh, not good enough opportunities, you know, for young people especially. And, you know, so forth. Uh, I mean, you hear people going on vacation elsewhere, but you don't hear a lot of people coming, you know, home to Diana for a vacation, you know? Right. And um, uh, Alicia, uh, wh what's your thoughts on what these young ladies are saying? They're saying that um, they, it was once a beautiful place, a wonderful place uh, to live and, and raise your children and educate yourself and, and gain opportunities and so on. Um, how about now? I mean, you're living here in New Amsterdam every day. Is, is what they're saying is that true reflection 
Uh, actually, Salim, it's not true today, Guyana, but what they're saying is that they heard from their grandparents, which I did too, because I wasn't, I'm not that old, so <laughs> I didn't, I'm not living, living in the time where it's, but I'm living right now in PPP's time, and the time now, actually, now we don't have a lot. We can't explore a lot like normal kids, like for youths in other countries. We don't have all that opportunities, all that dreams. Even if we have dreams, we got to work really hard to get it, and some of us don't achieve those dreams. Yeah. I mean, as young people, anyone you can answer here, you know, as young people, what is it that young people uh, want generally? I mean, I'm quite sure young people in any country uh, basically want just about the same things, you know, and Guyana is no different. What do you what, what do you guys want as young as young people? Well, as a young person, I would say I want opportunity, opportunity to be better in the future, um, in education, jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing, uh, young people, you know, they we like to have a voice in things, and I think that's what the AFC brings is you know a voice for the youth. A voice, yeah, and and certainly the the that's the kind of change that the AFC is looking for. Um, t tomorrow, um, there's a big event in Caribbean, uh, we were told, uh, by local organizers here mm -hmm. in Caribbean, and even uh, our New Amsterdam team is heading out um, to, to Caribbean. Uh, what can we expect from you guys um, in Caribbean um, in terms of uh, your, your message to the young people here in, in Barbies especially? Well, the main message that we want to send to the young people is that they need to get out and vote. They need to, uh, if they want to see a change, they have to actually get out and do something about it. So that will be our main message to them. And um, we hope that it appeals to them and they actually listen. What are you going to be, what message are you going to be focusing on well, uh, tomorrow? Mostly I'll be focusing on the opportunities for young people. Uh, you know, if they do vote for the AFC, which, you know, would be a lot of great opportunities. And yeah. <coughs> That's pretty much what I'm going to be focusing Great. on. Excellent. Well, this is a live program. You can call in any time. Uh, my name is Salim, and I'm sitting in for Veer Sami Ramaya. With me are uh, three fellow Barbicians, just like yourselves. Uh, two are residing in the United States and are enjoying some uh, opportunities and some education and those kind of things. And, um, and we've got um, others, uh, uh, youth here. I just want to mention briefly um, that, that in the upcoming election, 65% um, of the voters in the upcoming election um, are young people between the ages of 18 and 35. Mm. And just to give you an idea, um, someone who voted for the first time under um, the PPP in 1992 um, is now 36 or 35 thereabout. And someone who was born in 1992 and can now vote for the first time. So that's a huge chunk of our population. Mm -hmm. What's bad and what's really, uh, 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 you know, scary in Guyana is that young people are not voting. In the last election, 70% of our young people didn't vote. Uh, and if you look at, if you look at the numbers, uh, if the young people had voted for party XYZ, XYZ in Barbies, mm -hmm. um, if, if, if those young people had voted differently, we would have, we would have had a new government. So the opportunities are, are great. Um, uh, the future is yours, is uh, you know, the, the young people, and the, 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 the call is to act now, that we have to ensure that young people get on a vote. W why vote? I mean, uh, w I think the problem why young people are not voting, mm -hmm. because they don't, they, I don't think they understand what voting is, right. and to a large extent, our, our older generation have destroyed, mm -hmm. a kind of um, desecrated the whole value of what voting is. Okay. Uh, explain what from, from your perspective, why vote and, and, and why it's important? Well, I think um, young people need to vote. I think maybe in the past they haven't voted because the government hasn't been doing much for them. I think with AFC, there's going to be more opportunities for them. They should realize that uh, they're not going to have a chance and a voice with AFC. Um, I wouldn't vote for something or get involved in something that wasn't doing anything for me. Mm -hmm. So I think they need to realize that AFC will provide them with things and they'll benefit from it. So they should go out and actually vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I truly agree with Nadia. But uh, the main reason why I'm here campaigning for the AFC is not only because, you know, we do need a change in this country. It's, it's pretty obvious yeah. that we do. But, um, you know, I do, I believe in Guyana and I believe in its people. And, you know, my people, I should say. And, you know, I have the confidence that the young people, they can have their you know, voice heard, be heard, and they can make the right choice and vote for the AFC. 
Alicia, um, in the U.S., you know, we all, we all talk big about Obama and how much the Obama did and the campaign. But to a large extent, the young people, um, uh, you know, trail bla trailblazed and made sure that uh, there was a dramatic change. You were involved with the AFC uh, to a large extent in, in our Barbies uh, campaign. Uh, what motivates you to, 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 in, to vote, of course, to begin with, and to encourage other young people to vote? Salim, um, because firstly, we need um, change in Ghana. That's already stated out, that's laid out on the table. Other than that, we as young people have dreams. We, ha we want so much, we want education, we want after school lessons, things that we certain of us can't afford, um, especially when it comes to the university part. Most of us can't afford to go to UG. So we want a government that can go in, that can um, actually, when they're there, study of not only the high populated or the wealthy persons of Guyana, but the people that is below, that is dumb, that can't afford stuff. We need a government that is for the people and not only take care of their own or only take care of the people that have money that they can gain something from. We need a government that can go in and think about us and only us and only the well-being of us guys. And that is what I see in the Alliance to Change. That is why I'm actually supporting them. I'm pushing it forward. And I, everybody that talks to me, I always vote about Alliance to Change. Vote, vote, vote. Come election day, vote. Because we need a change in Guyana. And I think Alicia is absolutely correct. Um, uh, the, in the upcoming election, if young people were to vote correctly and vote responsibly, I think we'll definitely get change. And um, I, I know you're leading that charge here in, in Barbies, and I know Barbies is, is, is really warming up to the AFC, and the AFC has a lot to, to gain in the upcoming election um, uh, here. So um, I want to remind you again, this is a live uh, program, um, and uh, there, there's some great things that are happening. I want to invite everyone out tomorrow at 5 p.m. at our AFC Carriverton office. I think it's 78 Public Road, uh, Carriverton. And um, we'll be having a, a youth rally. Uh, there will be some giveaway, um, some prizes, and so on, so that, that you can get. Um, so come on out and have a great time. I, I think there might be some callers, um, I'm sure. Um, so we'll take a few and see wh wh where they'll take us. Hello, good evening. You're on this special program. How can I help you? That was a caller, I guess. Uh, but let's continue. Um, act and act now. Um, let's say you've... I mean, we kind of messed up and we, we don't want to vote in this upcoming election. What can be some of the consequences of, of not voting? You know, we can, yeah. su we can suffer another five years under the same government, you know? Um, the, and pro go ahead. the problems of now wouldn't be fixed and a lot of the youths complain that they want to see a change and they want to leave Guyana but yet no if you don't make the effort to make the change and stand up for what you believe in nothing's going to change so they need to actually get out and vote um, that's why it's important for them to do so exactly well, why we say act now well th there's this whole issue in Guyana for for it forever its history, mm -hmm. 45 years plus, um, where we voted race. Mm -hmm. uh, where Indians, by and large, voted PPP, and, and Afro, Afro Guyanese voted PNC. Um, do you see the young people um, changing direction, charting a brand new direction in terms of um, uh, um, their voting pattern? Well, um, I would hope so. It's hard coming from the US where, uh, especially as West Indians, we all kind of black and Indian, we're together and we live as one, and we're here, there's such a divide, it's, uh, it's strange to see that, and especially in this day and age, 2011, that that still even exists. So I would hope that young people today move past that and uh, not vote based on race, because I don't think the country would be able to move forward if they continue voting that way. I think they have to come together as a people, and that's how Guyana's going to progress. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, you on the ground every day, uh, interacting with both Afro youths and, and of course uh, Indian youths, you know, you had a very successful basketball tournament, congratulations, you know, um, and congratulations to the winning team. Uh, so, Absolutely. Uh, wh wh what are some of your um, sounding from the ground? Actually, Salim, um, mostly we don't have this racialism thing going on. What we have right now is youths being ignorant to vote. And many a times you go out here and listen to you say, why vote? It's ignorance, they're going to go back on the same thing. That's what they keep saying. But 
what I need to tell you or what I normally tell them is that if you stay home and don't vote, then of course it's going to happen again. The power is in your hand. The ball is in your court. Play. Yes, and it did play well <laughs> the other day. Uh, yes, it did. Both Kim Raj and Rafael was here, and um, you guys had a great time at the Bagdam Court, right? Yes, we uh, did. Bagdam Road Court there, so that's great. Hey, you know what? Um, uh, recently, um, the AFC did a, its own focus group with some young people, mm -hmm. and um, we found out that um, about 75 to 80 percent of the young people, when asked, um, do you want to live in Guyana? 75 80 percent said no that their choice um uh, uh, to live some their choice is to live somewhere else besides guyana um what is that telling us i mean what does that mean well to me it means that the youths don't feel that there's anything for them here uh there's no reason why they'd want to leave i live in the united states and um though I, guyana is great there's opportunity for me there so I, I want to be there. So there must be reasons why youths don't want to stay here, why they want to leave the country. Right. It's a shame that, you know, they're running to other countries when they have their own country here, which can, you know, they can, you know, in terms of voting, they can vote for the change and help develop their country. Yeah. You know, um, it's, we have these opportunities that, you know, everyone should have. And, um, you know, if I want the best for my country, you know, so should all of you. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be understood that though we're from, the, we live in the United States, that uh, things aren't easy. I think a lot of people think from foreign countries think that it's easy that we just get up and go to school in the morning and we have all these opportunities, but it's a lot of work. Uh, money doesn't come so easy. You really have to put effort into it and make that sacrifice in order to get all those things. Mm -hmm. Salim, I think that we as Guyanese kids or uh, Guyanese youth, we have we don't have the opportunities as a foreign base. Youth. So that is why everybody is running from Guyana. Actually, I have friends that graduated four years UG and still can't find a job. Mm -hmm. What is that telling you? Guyana has no sort of opportunity for the youth. So how can we keep youth if we don't have opportunity? And our biggest problem in Guyana right now is unemployment. We're on a develop and we're on we our unemployment rate is extremely high. Yeah. So the youth feel that like why stay in Guyana? Stiflingly high. Uh, you mentioned UG, and um, the latest the latest statistics on UG is that 89 percent. That's 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 nine out of ten persons graduating from University of Guyana within two years leave the country. Mm. Within two years of graduation leaves the country, leave, uh, th which means 11 uh, 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 11 percent, or just about one out of ten persons uh, person is left to run and manage and to take care of Guyana. Uh, I mean, th that, that those are staggering statistics um, from our young people. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when you correlate that with how they're voting, they, they identify a problem, but they run. They identify a problem, yeah. they don't vote. I mean, what would it take for us to get to the psyche of the young people to say, hey, your problem is related to your vote, or am I wrong? Uh, is, is your vote related to your destiny or problem, or whatever it is? Actually, what we need to do, or what we at the Alliance of Change is trying to do, is educate people why they should vote. Educate people that if, when, yeah, and I don't like using the word if, when the Alliance of Change wins, what is being offered to them. That's all. Educate them. If you change the government, what will I have? Mm -hmm. I think I. Sorry, if I may add, you know, you have to think about the future generations to come as well, you know, not just our generation. Mm -hmm. I think it's important also for youths in Guyana to realize that um, they, they have to stay. They can't run from the from issue. You have to stick around and fight it. Um, it took me a year and a half living in the United States after graduating with my master's to find a job. So it's difficult everywhere right now. You can't get up and run somewhere else. You kind of have to stick it through and try your hardest to make it work. Yeah. Youths, um, and, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm kind of centering on, on the youth because I think uh, youth can make a difference mm -hmm. if they get up and act now. Um, uh, do you, do you, I mean, you work the ground every day. Do you see that young people are looking for change and not only looking for change, but are willing? Because today on Facebook, I was chatting with someone and they said, yeah, we need change, but I ain't voting. <laughs> 
you know, like, <laughs> I, I, it's, 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 it's the, the, the definition of insanity yeah. is to do the same it's thing over and over and expect yeah. a different result. So here, here are young people complaining about jobs and security and, and unemployment and all that kind of stuff, yet they, yet they want to do the same thing, not vote. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how do we change this? I normally tell, especially my peers, the young people that I get to talk to on a day to day basis, I tell them, listen, if the election comes and you don't vote, next five years, when I finish, I'm finished studying or I look down at you and I say, hey, where are you now? And you're telling me, hey, I can't find a job, don't complain. It makes no sense complaining if you're not going to vote for a change. I'm not saying, well, hey, I, you gotta vote. But nobody's forcing you, the ball is in your court your choice, you have to see where Ghana is and where Ghana is supposed to be or where Ghana can be. And the thing is with the older generation, they base it on race, they base it on everything else other than situation or struggle. They don't actually sit down and decide, well, hey, we're struggling in this area. Another government is offering us to take us out of this struggle. Let's give them a chance. That's not how we look at it. So that is what is in the young people's mind right now. Mm -hmm. Why should we vote? It's going to be the same thing. It's the old thing repeating itself. Listen, I normally tell people this. PPP waited 28 years to get into power. PNC ran this country for 28 years. So if we're still underdeveloped, what is that telling you? That we need to give somebody else a chance. Alliance for Change is offering us, or we are offering you guys a chance, a change, to give us a chance. And it's, it's um, and, and I think that's the crux of the matter here is that uh, everything we do is a risk. Uh, we vote for the PPP, it's not a risk. We know what will happen. Mm -hmm. We vote for the PNC, it's not a risk. We know what will happen. You would vote for the AFC, it's definitely a risk. It, it could it could be worse, yeah, or it could be better, or it could be better. So you can you can predict what the PPP will do. You can predict what the PNC will do. You certainly can. Uh, uh, um, uh, based on what we're saying and what, what our platform is, you can judge us from that. Mm -hmm. But definitely change is, what it's in, uh, is what's necessary here in Guyana, and, and the youth are the one who needs to lead that change. Mm -hmm. The older folks, I think, to a large extent, are going to vote race, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but the young people, I think, because the future is yours, um, you need to act right now. Let's see if we can take a call and see if this thing is working um, now and we'll... Hello. Hello, good night. Good night. Good and coming. Yes, how are you? Uh, I'm not bad. I'm the young lady here. Yes, there's three of them. Good night, sir. Yeah. Hello. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you all doing a good job, right? Oh, well, thank you very much. Congratulations you all for that. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I think talking this from over and over again, right? Look, the PVP calls the meeting at Ganger and only nine months. Mm. They went at Reliance 9 and they are afraid of the AFC. I am telling you that they are very afraid of the AFC because they've been there so long, say that say 20 years. Okay. The PNC was there for 28 years. You know what the PNC did to me? Stagnate me. Mm -hmm. The PPP stagnate my children. Now. But when I, mean, when I say stagnate, you mean the opportunity was not there for me, neither my children. Right. So are you, are, you voting for, are you voting AFC in the upcoming election? Of course. Excellent. And my family would be voting Excellent. for the and, and, and where where are you calling from? What area in? I'm in calling from Kanji. Oh Kanji, okay, great, great. And are your neighbors voting change also? Yeah, yeah. Um a lot here. A lot of people. Because I spoke to um Mr Karandad. Okay. The common people meeting at Chelsea and one of Gangara, but I said I think can about that. You know? so, so here, um, these, these young ladies, and of course, Alicia is from New Amsterdam, they came all the way from New York to help with change. Uh, how much are you helping us to get to bring about changes in Guyana? Well, um, I'm going up, I am going around the land, you know, when I come to me, then and so on, and I'm talking to people. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so, some couple of people come, come in by me for the past week and say, look, um, 
who we are going to vote for A and C, but then we are afraid they might victimize. We said, well, now here, you don't have to go at public meetings and keep close to them. That's right. But on voting day, you vote for the key. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I, I hear you loud and clear. And um, you know, Gaddafi right now is not in power, uh, and he can he can't victimize anybody. But but at, w at one stage of the game, well, he, he was victimizing just about everybody, yes. probably even us here. And you know, these people, these people, like yeah, they should realize that we put them there, and you could take them off. And we could take them off. But hey, uh, before you go, I want you to um, um, ask a question to this young lady, so they'll be able to. Um, um, you know, explain something to the audience um, in Barbies here. Yeah, um, seeing that they are old, over over there, right? Uh, what they what they are doing over there for the AFC, they are going about. And one more excellent, thing. Excellent question. One more thing. Mm -hmm. Look, three of my nephews left the country when they died. I ask them, whatever I look all these things they. Um, I read and and that for five years <laughs> over there. And if still live there and I'm over there, they say they let the rather take a chance over there. Mm -hmm. Because what they could do is a man to get a job. Yeah. What they could do in two years, you take them five years they could do. Excellent. Yeah. Well, good point, good point. So I'm going to ask um, the young lady to answer. Thanks a lot. Have a great time and, and yeah. continue to spread the word yeah, to vote yeah, change. Yeah. I'll do that. All right. Thank you very much. Well, to answer his question, I would say we do a lot. Of, we help with our parents. They're very much so involved with AFC. There's a New York, New Jersey chapter, and uh, we help a lot, especially Anita, with the fundraising and um, getting people involved. Even on our Facebook pages, we put up yeah. things about AFC. We even tell friends that are not Guyanese, but from different uh, countries and so forth, just so people are aware of what's going on yeah. and um, making others aware of AFC. And I think that's a big way that we do help overseas. Right. Yeah, and we do have a huge group of, you know, hardworking women and men, you know, Dr. Rohan Somar, San Bernard Harahu, the Ewart Marshalls, and, you know, yeah. they all are very, very much involved and active behind the AFC because they want what's best for yeah. their country. Uh, but uh, on a wider scale, there are Guyanese overseas are looking forward to some dramatic changes in Guyana in upcoming election? Mm, I, I you, is that a general feeling? Are you I would say so. I mean, we have, a, we have a big crowd every time we do fundraising parties and events and so forth. So I think a lot of people are hoping that there will be a change and they're hoping that there's going to be a difference in Guyana soon. Excellent. Alicia, how important is it, is it for us to get, for us here who are working on the, on the ground, to get that support, uh, the moral support and, and the backing from our brothers and sisters overseas? First of all, most of our um, finance comes from our fundraising and of course um, the back that we can get from the overseas is good because if people living overseas can see that guy and they need a change, it mean that they're living in so much of a better country, seeing why we need a change. So it's good to have their support, their moral support back in us. And you know what? Um, for, for, for 20, 30, uh, 40, 40 years, mm -hmm. you know, um, Guyanese overseas have, have consistently supported their, uh, their their brothers and sisters here with the barrels and money. Mm -hmm. $400 million dollars uh, yeah. annually mm -hmm. comes to Guyana uh, to support Barbies and Esikebo and everywhere else. Um, I just can't understand why um, we we don't want their support when it comes to, uh, the, um, the, 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 you know, for change. If they're calling, if they're sending their money and they send their barrels and they want to send some change, why not? You know, we should accept that that change and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. How important is it f as, as, as young Guyanese in the United States, mm -hmm. how important do you think it is um, to, 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 you know, spread the word of change and to uh, kind of inflame every Guyanese to, 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 talk, to talk change and to bring changes? I think it's very important because I personally feel that the, the thinking of the older generations based on race and that type of voting, it's, it's really unfortunate. And I think um, youth need to get together and the country needs to move forward. And I think the AFC and change and everyone un becoming unified is, is really going to make a difference. So it's very important. And I strongly believe in unity and uh, moving forward and Guyana progressing. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, Guyana is a country, it's is capable of much more, you know, progress than what's occurring under yeah. the current government, you know? Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that youths can definitely, you know, bring about that change. Yeah. That 
we so desperately need. And I think I think what's probably fueling a lot of North Americans to even consider big changes in Guyana because a lot of them to a large extent would like to somehow relocate mm -hmm. uh, when they get older or they probably want to invest into Guyana. They, they've accumulated a tremendous amount of wealth mm -hmm. and they would like to invest into Guyana but it's somehow they, the, the, the equation is not right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and they can't get in. Let's take another call and see what um, they bring to us. Is there a call there? Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, I think you've got to turn down your television volume. Yeah. Yes, how can I help you? Good night. All right. All right, and that fellas mm -hmm. need some change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's continue our discussion here. Uh, young people, um, and that's our subject here tonight. And I want to remind you that we're giving away a lot of um, gifts tomorrow at the AFC Youth Rally um, in Carriverton, mm -hmm. five o'clock. Um, if you're interested. Uh, it's free. Just come on out. Uh, have a great time. There will be some snacks provided, of course, and, uh, and some giveaways, like I said, tomorrow. Uh, and the show continues in Georgetown. And uh, we have other activities that are happening around the country uh, with these young ladies talking about um, your future, <coughs> Act Now. Uh, Act Now is very powerful. And, of course, um, uh, uh, change is such a powerful word. Um, what exactly... Um, does it mean to you in terms of um, your life as, as a young person? Yesterday, in fact, I was at um, an orientation program mm -hmm. where there was about f uh, 50 young persons and, and kind of older persons too um, trying to uh, enlist into a program to learn computers. Okay. And the whole be, uh, premise of them going to that program was basically to change their life. Mm -hmm to transform who they are to something else so that they can be of better value or better work. Um, what, um, where is this change in the act now? To act, you really got to transform yourself. Mm -hmm. um, where does it have to come from, from in terms of a young per person? Mm -hmm. I think you have to have the real desire to want change. If you don't have that, then there won't be any anything. Um, for instance, me and Anita came from the United States just to help with this. So you have to have the desire, you have to really want it, and you have to go out and act on that. If not, there, nothing's going to happen. There will be no change. Yeah, and I think, you know, people have that blurred perception of what change is. You know, it can be bad, it can be good, but you just have to be willing to take that risk. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So let's take another caller here. Um, a very good night. Whoa, what's that? Uh, hello, good night. Yes, good night. Uh, good night, sir. Yes, um, where are you calling yeah. from? Yeah, I'm listening to a program. Okay. I'm calling from Amsterdam. Excellent. Yeah, right here on my side, you know? Okay. Yeah, but what Carl always mentioned about fear, the people fear from the boat. Right, because they want the boat to be at sea, but they fear for if they are at sea, they are living it, but what will become of them? Okay. You got to realize this, and I think you have to focus on this a lot. What could it be? What protection you have for the people? Actually, the, the caller, uh, uh, sorry, this, sorry to interrupt, but the caller was referring to persons don't want to be identified now as AFC members. Um, oh. uh, uh, they fear intimidation from the PPP and the PPP, uh, you know, activists and so on might, might um, pull contracts and you know, call them names and all them kind of stuff, you know. But, but I think your question is a, is a very valid question too, and I think you, you're making a very good point. Uh, when If we were to win the election, um, how do we bring about security, not only to our own members, but to the wider society? Is that, is that your question? That's good, but that is not a good question. Really. If people want to vote the FC, mm -hmm. but they are here, so they don't say, okay, let's send them what it's called. They just get to see them on the vote for the Okay. And you need to let people know that, okay, don't be afraid. It's your free choice to vote for whoever you want to vote for. Absolutely. Because I'm great to stay here from here. Yeah. Well, uh, people are fearful, you don't say they want to vote for here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, thanks, thanks, for the, thanks for the call, and um, uh, we'll, we'll, do, do, uh, we'll discuss that topic right now. Fear of voting AFC. I mean, it's one minute in a voting booth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's you and 
God, God. of the devil. But if people have fear, that, sh that says a lot about the current government, you know? Yeah. Why do they have this fear? Yeah, I mean, voting is your personal right. It's like choosing choosing w w which food to eat in the morning, you know. Uh, no, no one should victimize you for yeah. choosing one over another. Uh, voting, um, was it worth of a vote? Well, why, should, uh, why, why should there be a fear attached to something Well, I think like a lot of people are afraid that, even within themselves, that they're going against the, the, the past and their parents and their grandparents. The yes. They're going against the, their beliefs and even if no one knows their, their vote, they feel that maybe they're turning their backs on their parents or their grandparents. So um, I guess that would instill a sort of fear in you. I think what he was trying to really say is that people is afraid of going out and vote AFC. The, um, to answer that question, Colin, um, nobody knows who you're voting for. When you go in that booth, you cast your vote and come back back that ballot. No one knows if you vote for AFC or you vote for PVP or anything. So it's no big fear. Um, I understand the fear in coming out and support us in the community when we have this public meeting and all that. I understand that. But that's a thing that is your choice. If you feel that you're fearful to come out to the meetings because you'll be labeled as the AFC, then don't come. Just go vote AFC. I, I think if you look at the word fear itself, and fear is... Um, connotes that there is some lack of knowledge probably mm -hmm. or, or there is um, a lack of confidence or there's something that is that that is not clear you know if there's a wall here and someone tells you that there is a monster on the other side mm -hmm. I mean you'll always be scared if you don't climb over and watch mm -hmm. you know so um, I, I and I think that is what the AFC is trying to do to a large extent we're trying to hold hands we're trying to um, hold every voter and walk them across the road um, uh, and let them know that there's nothing scary on the other side, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and, I, and I think Nadi, you can hit it on the nail, mm -hmm. you know, where there's there's a personal, almost a betrayal, betrayal right. a betrayal of if you don't vote the cup mm -hmm. or the palm tree, uh, you know, I, I, I've betrayed, you know, all my ancestors, mm -hmm. I've, I've betrayed all that stuff. So I think fair, um, uh, um, fellow Barbicians, mm -hmm. you got to understand fair is not what the PVP can do to you. Fear is what you've done to yourself. And that has, that has to be clear. Let's, let's take this other caller. Hopefully they're not fearful of voting for change. Hello? Hello? Yes, good night. Good night, sir. I would like to ask a question to the two young ladies that are sitting here. Absolutely. Yeah. Go, go right Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York Excellent. And there's a lot of neighbors of voting change? No, no, let me ask a question first. Yeah, let me, let me ask you one first, man. What's going on? All right, go ahead. I'll let you go first then. Uh, if uh, these two young ladies are saying that uh, things were different those days, how come the, the parents were under the scenes? I'm not a PPP supporter, get me straight. Oh, thank God. Right? But I just want to ask a stupid question like that. Oh, that's that. Why did the parents run if it was better? Right. It, that is not a stupid question, by the way, and I want to thank you for that question, and um, well, I'll have them answer your question. Thanks. Well, to answer that question, I would say the stories I've heard from my parents is that things were different while they were growing up mm -hmm. uh, during primary school days. Um, not as adults, when they reached their 20s, 30s, things began to change, and that's when they left Guyana. Yeah, and I think um, to a large extent, um, Guyanese have been moving away, moving away from Guyana uh, since the days of the PNC, and um, the, the PPP, you know, continued that 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 messy um, path of um, Guyana's destruction. Let's take another call again. Good night. How can we help you? Good night. I I see a lot of young people here, and very educated people okay. for the PNC, and that is new. Great. I have read to both PPP against them. And uh, I'm quite disappointed in what they did, how they behave, and things they're saying for. But I'm hopeful that ASC will bring a change. And I know that this will be so because I, I see a lot of uh, people who have joined ASC are very educated people, people who are very intelligent, and uh, this my hope. I see we defy. And I know that this will happen very soon. I'm going to come. 
Where are, you, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Quarantine. Quarantine, okay, what village? Adventure. Adventure, okay. Yeah. Um, so tell us, um, what is so hopeless about Barbies that you're looking for hope for? Corruption, uh, corruption, too much. Okay. Uh, I hope that, um, you know. What's, what's, do, you, do you know of any specific instances of corruption uh, oh, in your area? Last time, last time. Okay, great. So, so that is one thing you... How is corruption affecting you though? I mean, a lot of people are saying that, oh, them big boys are stacking the money and running away with it. But how is it affecting you? Because the development is supposed to be done in our area, it should not be done. Okay. Right? And then our education system is a sham. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and I guess, do, do you have um, um, young children? I mean, I mean, voting age children? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, this and time, this time, it's a change. We all about to be voting for it. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much, sir, and uh, do encourage your neighbors and others to vote yeah. change. Yeah, we got to think about the change, man. You know, we uh, we really love to get a dollar wrong. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that call is talking about hope. I think that's another powerful word um, that has been, um, you know, talked in Guyana. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons why um, young people are not voting at such high rate is because of the hopelessness mm -hmm. um, not only in themselves but um, in, in their belief that the system can work for them so there's a tremendous amount of hopelessness mm -hmm. um, I mean how do we come out of that I mean what are your thoughts and um, uh, are you guys hopeless no well, we believe in <laughs> AFC <laughs> so we're not hopeless <laughs> No, yeah. but um, I think uh, what the young people need to, they need to take that chance, like we were discussing before, mm -hmm. a risk, and they need to take that risk and believe in something, and maybe AFC can make that change. Um, I'm not saying that it will, but it could, and they need to believe and trust and go out there and vote. Like we were saying before, people are afraid to, to vote, but I think people need to stop thinking about the past and uh, what their parents might think or their grandparents, and think about the future and the future of Guyana and how their vote could, could make that difference. How does that vote make a difference? I mean, I've heard arguments so many times mm -hmm. that, um, you know, uh, I don't vote, but I guess I gotta go find my daily bread. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't care to vote because the next day I gotta go to work any, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how does one vote make a difference? It does make a difference. There's a power in numbers, and I think what people need to realize is that they have to come together, and, and each vote does count. Uh, you may not see it right away, you may not see it a, a month from now, even a year, but in time with change you'll see progress it's your future basically. Okay. great i know you guys are advocating for change um alicia's on the ground and i keep repeating this over and over mm -hmm. um, um how do you define your vote um vis-a-vis uh, -vis change you know the, 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 the would it bring that change that you're looking for actually the point that you made with um everybody saying that they still got to go out and work it's true because you hear that a lot but Nobody said it's well, you have to stop working. Nobody is saying that AFC is going to bring money at your door and pay your bills for you. We are saying that we are working towards developing Guyana, stopping corruption, cutting down crime. Those are the kind of things. And those that's the hope that I have in voting. Mm -hmm. And that is why I think that my vote will give a ch uh, change. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, the multiplication of, of those votes. Let's take another caller here and see what they bring us. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. We got no female callers tonight. <laughs> we got all female guests, you know, uh, all these men. All right, go ahead. Good night. Good night. I call it from Mobile. Uh, okay. It's why it means you good night. Right? All right, we don't, want, we don't want to be calling people's name and those kind of stuff, but go right ahead. Uh, he, 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 he talking about the AFC also, and he actually, he actually get ruled on Mobile already. Okay, you're, say, you're, you're saying that he is um, campaigning for the AFC? Yeah, he's a member. Okay, and are you a member? No, the person who I tell him about. Okay, how about you? Well, I just want to head man to vote for the AFC. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay. So you probably his right hand man? Yeah, because the same boy I tell him about the uh, member of the AFC? Yeah. They like to have a lot about me. So tell me, uh, tell me this, why are you and the people of Anchorville so interested in voting for change? What is it that you believe needs to be changed? Well, we put the PA and we, we can have the change of that. Great, I think that's, uh, that sums it up 
you know, I mean, we, 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 <laughs> we put them in, we gotta take them out. But that's a gas change, man. I wanna thank you very much for that call. Continue the great work um, in Anchorville. Uh, encourage your neighbors and friends uh, to do the same and um, uh, promote change. So that's um, that's more. I, I mean, what was the feeling you guys are getting? You you you've been here two or three days, mm -hmm. and um, I know you're tired. You've <laughs> been moving quite a lot. Um, you you've been to the fundraiser that um, that's in Wim right now. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount of people there. Mm -hmm. You're hearing all these callers talking change, change, mm -hmm. change, and they seem like traditional kind of PDP people. voters. Mm -hmm. What does this what does this mean to you? I think it's great. I honestly didn't expect uh, to see so much support, even at the at WIM right now. I didn't. We didn't expect to see so many people there. So I think it's great, and um, it's 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 all positive because it makes us feel like we came here for a reason. So. Right. Does that give you a positive feeling too? I mean, that things oh are, yeah, things definitely. Are going it feels like a job well done. You know, all the support we've been throwing into the AFC. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it finally means something. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we can actually come and see firsthand what's what going on. Well, that's good leadership for Malisha, you know, she's working the ground. Um, uh, where's Anchorville, by the way? Sorry. Anchorville is somewhere around here. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> Maybe it's somewhere going up the cranky. I don't want to say it's Anchorville, right I think, no. is um, somewhere not far from Albion. Around, yeah, some, some, somewhere around there. But we last the next somewhere up the cranky. Hi, good night. How can we help you? Hi, good night. Um, I would like to ask you guys here. Party. The Alliance for Change is Guyana's largest multi-ethnic party that, that uh, plans to bring change, put bring the races together um, to vote for change and uh, to ensure that we can bring about um, some level of uh, um, sanity to government, um, to bring back jobs, to bring back uh, justice, and to bring back security to our people. Does that help you in our definition? No, it doesn't. Because what I see here is a lot of people from the AFC, from even from North America. The Canadian days have been gone a long time ago. Right. And those two young ladies there, they said their parents have seen a change when there was a change of government. Right? And then they migrate. What that change does. Yeah. They, no, they are there. Will they, if the AFC wins the election, will they come back and live again? Well, let, let, let's, um, let's explore that whole idea with our, our guests. I want to thank you very much for your call. You've been very um, um, informative. So he's talking about, um, about um, AFC seems to be very foreign. Um, and I see nothing wrong with that, actually, because 400 million US dollars comes in. From foreign countries. And quite sure half of that comes to Barbies. Because <laughs> our wee Barbies are so successful overseas. You know, we send back a lot of money and barrels and these kind of things, mm -hmm. which is OK. So, is it good for us to bring back a lot of Guyanese to help us to b promote change? Yeah. You know, I, for one, I'm getting my, uh, my degree in business management right now. I, after I graduate, I would definitely love to come and invest in Guyana. You know, this is where my heart and my soul is. I grew up here, and, you know, I definitely believe in the country, you know. My parents, they have their business here, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, unfortunately for me to have a better opportunity, they moved to the States. Yeah. So, you know, they are also willing to move back and invest, you know, if we do have a, a change of that. I think that we need to give the um, young ladies some a little credit because we as Guyanese, especially the ones that never left Guyana, we don't know what it is to really see. We only know that our country is bad, but we didn't went to another place to compare it to. These young ladies are living in America, came back to Guyana on holidays and so on. So they actually see what their parents, they have a first and experience of what their parents was explaining to them. Mm -hmm. So for the fact that they left their home to come to help us Guyanese um, for the change and everything, we need to give them a little credit for that. Absolutely. Because yeah. they're actually comparing America and the life that they have here, there, and the opportunity that the youth have there with Guyana that we have practically none. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, to, to a large extent, uh, 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 um, Guyana's destiny or Guyana's um, path to development must be linked to our Guyanese overseas. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamental to the AFC. Mm -hmm. um, uh, India, China, to the, two, the two of the most progressive countries today um, have developed their country 
um, because Chinese and Indians left China, educate themselves, gained experience, gained wealth, and came back and in, we invest into China. India and yeah. China. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah. What's wrong with uh, uh, Anita um, bringing back her skills and, and investing it into Guyana? What is wrong with that? I think um, uh, you know us Guyanese are very near uh, short-sighted when it comes to these um, um, functional realities that can help Guyana. Uh, to, to a large extent, what we need is a lot more of that guy. Like I said, 89% of our UG graduates are leaving. Exactly. What's wrong with bringing them back? Mm -hmm. You know, we were left with 11% here uh, that can do a lot of work, mm -hmm. but can't do all the work. Yeah, but right now, again, I don't have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. That's probably the truth. So if these girls' parents got up and went away, I'm sure everybody can understand why. Yeah. can have more opportunity but we're putting our faith in the AFC that they'll bring about change Absolutely. I believe that if every Guyanese should be truthful and honest again has nothing to offer so if these people went the way that's the smartest thing that they could have done at that time and I guess now we want to see a difference we want people to stay here and that's what the AFC can do, bring about that change and provide opportunities. And like Alicia's saying, there's nothing for, Guyana has nothing to offer at right now. So I think what everybody wants to see is opportunity and that there will be things to offer. Yeah. And I want to I wanna just, uh, you know, a little story that I witnessed some time ago. I was writing Reliance, and I know where that is, that's in Kanji. Mm -hmm. uh, Reliance, and um, there were about 20 older women discussing about the AFC and change and change and change and they all were saying the same thing. Uh, oh, we need change, oh, we want change, we gotta get change, change is what we need in this place and all that kind of stuff. And then one young lady, the youngest woman among them got up and said, um, y'all not making any kind of sense that change cannot come. Change has to be created mm -hmm. and we have to be that change. If we don't change, nothing else is gonna change. Exactly. So I think that is, that is what the AFC is also saying. Mm -hmm. We are, and Alicia, I think, uh, Alicia, I think you said it right. We're not going to bring money to your doorstep. We're not going to bring job to you. Mm -hmm. We are going to create an environment so, um, uh, so that change can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but change got to happen by um, persons like yourself and, and your family and so on. We've got about um, five minutes more. We'll take a few more callers and they'll help us with the show. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Um, I have a question here for the two young ladies from America there. Go right ahead. Yes. Um, we have a lot of young ladies in the NY family. They are born and bred in America. They enjoy all the good things. But my God, one of them just said that um, her parents told her that's why she didn't why she, why she come now, why she didn't come then. Right? Okay. Yeah, a very good question. Let me ask no, you. Um, let me continue, right? You, you have a question or a statement? I just want to say, ask them where they were when Guyana passed is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is all the good things that America has to offer. Yeah. And now the faith says to come and tell the young people in Guyana how to live in Guyana. When America now is in Tamil, yeah. the faith says not to come to Guyana. Right? Why does it pack up their shops and go back to where they come from and they die? All the good things that Obama and people have to offer for them. Uh, thank you very much right. for your question. Right. The, 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 he's making a valid point right. that um, that you weren't here when PUP was destroying the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you both of you were uh, probably born in the 80s or late 80s, 90s. Right, I that's what I would um, say to address that question. Um, we weren't uh, probably around then, and even so, we were much, much younger, which I would say a lot of the youths now probably weren't around then, but still there needs to be change now. What do you, what, what do you say about a guy like that mm -hmm. who is somehow kind of straight jacketed and mm -hmm. he's somehow not um, uh, thinking clearly mm -hmm. he really doesn't understand the core issue that we need every hands on mm -hmm. deck to build this country this country is behind every single country in the caribbean mm -hmm. except haiti mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, if we get irene here uh, we are in deep you know what mm -hmm. you know so what do you say about a guy like this i mean he, he clearly needs guidance yeah but uh, i, I think that say? was a very ignorant comment but i mean uh, you know, I was I was bred here. I could say that. You know, I was born there, but my parents brought me back here. 
but you know, it wasn't my choice to leave. It was my parents' choice for me to leave for a better opportunity. So you have to ask yourself, why did they feel the need to take me to the U.S. for yeah. this better opportunity? Mm-hmm. It's now my choice to come back here and help Guyana. And do you feel that um, um, if you had stayed in Guyana, you would have been this uh, um, woman you are today? Absolutely not. You know, I, I feel obviously, you know, I, I probably would have, you know, went to UG, and you know. I wouldn't have has, had as many opportunities as I'm having now. You know, now I have a voice. I can come back to Guyana, and I can, I can use my voice to try and help. You know, bring about a change. And you can contribute a lot more. I guess you have you you have more tools in the box. Definitely. I'd like to say also to address uh, that caller that we're not here telling anybody how to live their lives. We're just giving our opinion and what we think would be good for the country. We're not telling any young people what they should do or how they should live. Everyone has the right to their own vote and what they believe in. Absolutely, and I think your vote is a powerful tool, and, mm-hmm. and you or I should never uh, tell anyone who to vote for. No. What we need yeah. to do is to show them that there's a, there's a different way and a better way of doing what you're doing. Next caller, good night. Good night, sir. I want to welcome the, our partner from America. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Strong Excellent. Why do you support the AFC? Because the AFC. I want to ask you a question, and I've asked um, our guests here um, about answering the previous call. How do you? Uh, how do you? I'm quite sure you get a lot of comments like that in your neighborhood, also. How do you answer a guy uh, um, that just, you know, wants to m- make some noise? The guy just Do you find his thinking is um, is it minority right now or? Yeah, I don't think that minority is minority. <laughs> okay, okay. Right? So, oh. so he's wrong almost. Right. So I will not even entertain people like those. I want to say to only support the idea of the idea. You want young people to be a work, to be a thing. That's the idea. Excellent. Yeah, do, you have, do you have any? Yeah, great. Do you have any specific questions for our guests? Uh, basically, no, I'm to tomorrow. Oh, excellent. So I'll see you there tomorrow then. Yes, sir. All right, great. Uh, that was um, a, a caller who thinks you guys mm-hmm. are needed here. <laughs> um, how long are you guys going to be here? Uh, for the next few days, about four or five days. Okay. And um, I guess you're experiencing a lot of positive vibes mm-hmm. about the AFC. Mm-hmm. Um, um, wh- what are you going to take home or what are you going to tell our um, activists in, in North America? Oh, well, I'm very enthusiastic to go home and tell them about the support here and the positive vibes here. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, there's some negative, but that comes with it. That's right. So, mm-hmm. if I Alicia? could say something, Salim. The caller before, he made me so scared. Um, so, if I have to go to UG for four years and do a law program, then go over to Trinidad and finish that law program, I might be welcome back home. <laughs> That's clearly what you were saying to me. If I go do my studies somewhere else and come back to invest in Ghana, I'm not welcome. But then, provide a place for me to do it here, and I'll stay here and do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the bottom line um, uh, for the AFC. We need not to leave Guyana to see the glory. I think we need to create that glory yeah. right here in Guyana. Let's take another caller. We, uh, these callers are getting, I don't think, yeah, we, we do have them. Uh, good night. Hi, good night. Who is the hard work if you're in Guyana? Uh, what is that, sorry? Who is the hard work if you're in Guyana? Who is the hard working people? I, I think it's um, guys like you and me and persons, you know, I, th- I think you probably a hard worker. Why do you think people can just 